Hello Hex Kittens! Welcome back to another episode of Knitting's a Drag! I'm Alexis Hex, and today I'm going to help you spread your seed. Seed stitch. You nasty. Now, seed stitch is a very beautiful textural stitch that's really nice because it is reversible on both sides, so it makes it great for a multitude of projects. Also, if you've followed along before and you have watched my ribbing video, it's knit in a very similar fashion. If you've done a one-by-one -one ribbing where you knit one, purl one, it's almost exactly the same. So you have the kind of those tools already in your repertoire. See what I'm doing? Building from the past? You get me. You see. You see what I'm doing. Alright, let me show you how it's done. Alright, so when you're making seed stitch, if you remember back to when we did ribbing, here's a one by one ribbing. So ribbing looks like this because all the knits are stacked on top of each other and all the pearls are stacked up on top of each other. And so it looks the same on both sides. And you're going to be, when you see a knit, you're going to be knitting the knits and purling the pearls. Now, seed stitch is similar, but it's instead of they lining up, they all kind of are askew. So when you get to them, you'll you knit the pearls and you purl the knits. And the easiest way to do this is to do an odd number of stitches. On here, we had an even number of stitches to keep it nice and even. So you just knit one, purl one across. So we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna cast on an odd number of stitches so that it'll be knit one, purl one across, ending on a knit one and then each row will be the same, but since there's not even, they don't line up. And that's gonna create our seed stitch. And let's get ready to cast that on. All right, so we have our slip knot and we are going to cast on using the long tail method. And we're gonna cast on 23 total stitches because we need an odd number of stitches. And then you'll see how very similar it is to doing the ribbing, but with such a different dramatic um, look. And it has a really nice texture, so it can be really great for incorporating to all kinds of knits. You can do it on sweaters, you can use it as a scarf, because the nice thing with seed stitch too is that it is also uh, reversible, so you can, you know, it looks the same on both sides and it doesn't roll like if you were to do stock in that. I will finish casting on and I will see you at the end of the cast on row. All right, so we have cast on 23 stitches. And to work the seed stitch, pull a little bit of yarn out of the skein. All right, so we are going to, just like when you did the ribbing, knit one, purl one across, because this is like, it was like if it was a one by one ribbing. So we're going to knit. So we go in from the front, yarns to the back, you wrap, Pull that loop through and you drop it off and then we would purl so we bring that yarn back to the front and start coming from the back wrap it bring that loop up drop off the old loop and we discontinue that down the road switching between knit and purl all the way through this should seem very familiar going. Yeah, so you got this groove. You know how it is. Switching back to knit and then forward to purl. You're old hat at this. You've done this. I've seen the view counts. You've been there. You all love the ribbing video. All right, good job, everyone. We're almost there. We're knit. Pearl. Knit. And now 
When we did the ribbings, we were always ending on that purl because there was an even number, but for this, we have one more, so we will still same pattern of knit one, purl one, and then you go on to the knit one. And then that is our first row. So we switch back over, and it's the same row over and over. Now, when you look at this, if it was ribbing, your first inclination would be like, oh, here's a purl. I want to purl that, knit, purl, knit. But that's we're doing the exact opposite. You knit the purls and you purl the knits. So that way they're not creating that same line going up. It staggers them back and forth. And that's why it's always easier to do it with an odd number of stitches because you don't have to overly think about it. But so we'll do that same row again. Knit one, purl one across, and then the last one again will be a knit one. So we're going to get knit. Purl, knit, and purl, and we're getting ready to knit because look, there's a purl bump here. So that's a seat stitch, so that means, oh, we gotta knit those purls. Oh, and look, a knit. So that means we're gonna purl that knit. So you're always doing the opposite of like what you see in your work as you're reading your knitting. Keep on going with your knit one and then your purl ones all the way across. And, oh, looks like a knit stitch, so we're gonna purl. And oh, there's a purl bump, so we're gonna knit it. Sometimes it takes a little getting used to because you're always kind of, a lot of times you'll have things like lining up, you have your knits on top of knits for like stock and net or on garter or if you're doing your ribbing so it's kind of a nice one it kind of makes you think a little bit thinking is never a bad thing it would be bad if more people did some thinking this is a nice happy orange happy orange i sound like the drag queen bob ross <laughs> all right we're gonna continue Stitch. So just like before, we're going to knit that stitch. And then you can see we're starting to, you can see how they're like not lining up. You can see all the bumps. So here's purl bump, but then the purl bump for the next row is shifted and then it's shifted back. So I am going to knit a few more rows and I will be right back to show you what it looks like. six rows in so you can kind of start to see how this builds on itself you can see the bumps kind of jump back and forth starting to shape over this is a very lovely texture and I will be right back when I have the swatch finished all right so it's turning out really nice and the final step for this even though it's just a swatch we're gonna bind off but when you're binding off in seed stitch, you're going to want to do it similarly to like we did with the ribbing. So you're going to bind off in pattern. So what that looks like as a, a little refresher for you and for some of you it might be brand new. So we are going to, just like we were going to, we're going to knit the first stitch and then we purl the second stitch. And then we pass that for, stitch over. And then we continue on. So then we're Knit this stitch, pass that stitch over, and purl this stitch, and then pass this stitch over. And keep on going down the whole way again. Knit this one, and pass this stitch over. Bring that yarn back to the front so that we can purl. Pass the stitch over. All right, I will finish this off and I will show you our finished product once the ends are woven in. And there we go. That is how you make the seed stitch. As you can see, it's just a very textural stitch. It's got nice bumps. It is reversible. So it looks the same on both sides. So it's just a very versatile stitch that you can 
apply it to like scarves, you can put it in hats, you can put it in sweaters, you can put it pretty much anywhere you want. And this is another really good stitch to have in your arsenal. And now you have that stitch. You own it. You can make it yours. You're the seed stitch master. <laughs> all right, Hex Kittens. That is everything you need to know to make seed stitch. I want to see it in all of your projects. Send me pictures. Tweet them to me. You can find me on all social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Ravelry. All of the info is down below. And until next time, stay hexy. Bye.